What are some examples of how you support the education and calibration of your allied health partners when working with a patient common to each of you? Um, so definitely, I think that when you work in a team, you're able to support um, the educational principles and calibration for the patients that you share. So for example, often we'll go to get someone from the waiting room and, you know, they, they do a, a couple of failed attempts at a sit to stand and then start trying to shuffle into the waiting room. And, you know, is that your big sit to stand? Is that your big walk? And if I get a no. Well, was that your loud voice? So we're able to really incorporate that from the minute they enter the clinic. Um, sometimes our clinic has a lot of windows. So we spy out of those windows too. And we see if they're doing their big walk-in or their big transfer out of the car. Um, we're listening to them at the desk and hearing what's going on, how they interact as they check in for their appointment. Um, so really from the minute they arrive, till the time they leave, I think that we're all watching on how can we educate and calibrate the goals that we know we're all working on so that, um, you know, they, they, get, they get hammered the entire time. They're going to get that carryover eventually. So whenever I'm thinking about helping with carryover for loud or big, I always want to touch base with the person's PT or OT first and ask them, what should I be looking for? What do you want me to cue this person for? And it might be something simple, just one task. It could be their functional task for the day. And just to have that back and forth and check in with the other clinicians to see what should I be looking for? So the communication is really important there. And, and I do the same thing for them. So I might say, make sure when you're counting, when you're doing your exercises, that you're using your loud voice and that Heather can hear you and Julia can hear you. Um, or say, you know, make sure when you go over, you say hello to the people at the front desk when you're passing by with a good loud voice or have a nice greeting for Julia when you get to your session. So it's important that we're talking to each other about what, about the tasks that we're trying to shape and carry over. I am biased but I think that my team does an excellent job of really supporting and educating each other on how to calibrate our patients. Um, we're really fortunate because we all work in the same area. And um, many times if Meredith is working with a patient doing LSVT loud and they need to take a break and go to the bathroom, I keep an eye on them and look at how they're walking. So I'm almost prepared and ready for them before they even come to me. And I really love when Meredith shares with us what the functional phrases are of those patients, because then I try to trick them into saying some of them and I try to incorporate them just into the regular conversation of what we're doing when we're normally doing our exercises or our hierarchy tasks, whatever that may be. So when we're able to share what the specific things are that we're really aiming to increase the effort and amplitude on, it just makes it so much easier for everyone. And then our patients really start to understand that we really have an eye on them at all times and we have an ear on them at all times. Um, and after a while, they learn that it's not okay to slip up, um, that someone's always listening and watching. And I think that really helps to engage them in self-calibration because now they're even more careful about thinking about what they have to do and how they have to do it. 